We need to talk about the Dreadnoughts. The Australian motorcycle gang was a great enemy for G.I. Joe. As we revisit the early Dreadnoughts, let's enjoy their favorite snack, grape soda and chocolate-covered donuts. That is disgusting. Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is the show where we review every vintage G.I. Joe toy from 1982 to 1994. I'd like to start by thanking a patron. Thanks Sean Beckett for supporting the channel on Patreon so I can continue doing these videos. Thanks to Master Chiny for the title card image for this video. It's very much appreciated. Great work as always. I love his style. He's done several title card images in the past and this is another really cool one. Thank you. Chaos. Destruction, Anarchy, Motorcycles. These are the words that describe the Dreadnoughts. As the new G.I. Joe toy line was starting to take off, the creative people at Hasbro were coming up with a lot of new ideas. They often drew on pop culture for some of those ideas. Someone at Hasbro had a brilliant plan for a new enemy for G.I. Joe. Ewoks. Yeah, G.I. Joe almost had fuzzy teddy bears. How did the Ewoks transform into dangerous rebel bikers? Grab your grape soda and chocolate-covered donuts and join me. This is not a very good combo, but the best way to enjoy it is to eat the donut first and wash it down with the grape soda. Nope, that's still terrible. HCC 788 presents Buzzer. This is Buzzer, the Dreadnought from 1985. This figure was introduced in 1985. It was also available in 1986. It was discontinued for 1987. It was available at some point through the mail from Hasbro Direct, but I don't have the exact dates for that. There were no other vintage versions of Buzzer. There were a few post-vintage versions in 2004, 2005, and 2007. Buzzer was designed by Ron Rudat for Hasbro. Buzzer was one of the first three Dreadnoughts released in 1985. The others were Ripper and Torch. The Dreadnoughts was a biker gang based on the post-apocalyptic Mad Max movies. They were led by Zartan, the Master of Disguise released in 1984. You could see the Dreadnoughts as the first sub-team in the G.I. Joe universe. They worked with Cobra, but they weren't specifically Cobra agents. They were independent. Dreadnought is probably a combination of the words Dreadnought and Dreadlock. Though the Dreadnoughts was a biker gang, they did not come with motorcycles. In 1985, the closest you could get at mass retail was the Cobra Ferret, which was an ATV, not a motorcycle. They were sometimes depicted riding the ferret. They were also sometimes depicted riding the Chameleon Swamp Skier, which was a small vehicle that came with Zartan. The Chameleon was only available with Zartan, so if you wanted a Swamp Skier for each of your Dreadnoughts, you would have to get multiple Zartan action figures. In the comic book series, at least some of the Dreadnoughts had proper motorcycles. The first real Dreadnought motorcycle was the Sears exclusive Ground Assault Cycle, which was included with the Ground Assault set. However, this was just a recolored re-release of the G.I. Joe Ram motorcycle. In 1987, the Dreadnought Cycle was released. It was a three-wheeled motorcycle, which sort of works for a biker gang. It's still not the hog we expected the Dreadnoughts to ride. Through the years, the Dreadnoughts got many non-motorcycle vehicles, such such as the Thunder Machine and the Swamp Fire in 1986, and the Air Skiff in 1987. Larry Hama, the writer of the G.I. Joe comic book series and the toy file cards, tells a story about Hasbro wanting to do Ewok-like figures because of the popularity of Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Even back then, Hasbro was chasing trends. Larry urged that this was a terrible idea, and pitched the idea of a biker gang instead. Someone at Hasbro must have seen the light, so they gave us the Dreadnoughts instead of cute teddy bears. Speaking of file cards, the Dreadnought file cards got a little national attention when they were mocked by Jay Leno on the David Letterman show. I will eventually be doing a review of Torch, 
And yes, I will be making fun of Jay Leno. Buzzer was sort of the second in command of the Dreadnoughts. He often took control of the team when Zartan wasn't around. He was the smartest of the original three. The other two didn't have a brain cell between them. I have a couple of the post-vintage versions of Buzzer, so let's take a brief look at those. This is version three of Buzzer from 2005. It was in a comic book three-pack with two other Dreadnoughts, Ripper and Thrasher, not Torch, surprisingly. This third version version of Buzzer had mostly the same parts as version 1, just recolored, and those colors do look pretty good. He also had a new head that's smaller and a bit more proportional with the body. This is the 25th anniversary Buzzer released in 2007. This is a fully modern G.I. Joe action figure with updated parts and sculpting and articulation, so this is exactly what you would expect from this era. He has some updated accessories too, including a chainsaw with a flame on it that looks really cool cool. This is a more realistic chainsaw, but it can never replace that classic vintage accessory. He still has a backpack with a gasoline can, but that gasoline can is now red instead of silver. Let's look at Buzzer's accessories, and let's start with his most famous accessory, his diamond tooth chainsaw. This is in silver plastic. It has a grip and a stock like a rifle, but then it has that chainsaw blade. It also has a grip on the side for the left hand. This is Buzzer's signature weapon, and he made good use of it in the comic book and the animated series. His next accessory is what the card contents call a nunchucka axe, which I'm pretty sure is totally made up. This is made of silver, soft, flexible plastic. It looks like a sickle blade on a chain. It does have a little chip taken out of the blade. That's a nice touch. This accessory is often forgotten, and if this were a real-life weapon, it would be incredibly dangerous to the user. You would be just as likely to cut your your own head off or get it embedded in your leg than to injure an enemy. His final accessory is his backpack. His backpack is a rack with a gasoline can on it. It is a two-piece accessory. The gas can can be removed, although it does wedge on there pretty tightly, but you can take it off. They are both in silver plastic. That gasoline can is hollow on the other side, and it just pegs onto the rack very securely. Presumably this gas can is for fueling the chainsaw, but there's no obvious tank on the chainsaw to take fuel. With the accessories out of the way, let's take a look at the articulation for Buzzer. He did not have the standard articulation for a 1985 G.I. Joe action figure. He had the standard articulation for a 1984 figure. He could turn his head from left to right. He had a swivel head. He did not have a ball-jointed head. The ball-jointed heads were introduced in 1985, but Buzzer and the other two Dreadnoughts did not have it. This suggests the Dreadnoughts and one other figure from 1985, Tollbooth, were designed before the other 1985 characters and perhaps had a delayed release. He could lift his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow that allowed him to bend his arm at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep so he could swivel his arm all the way around. This was an O-ring figure, meaning the figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed him to move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color on Buzzer. This was a new figure with all unique parts. On his head, he has blonde hair. His hair is a separate piece with a ponytail. He has silver sunglasses and a white paint application on his teeth. On his chest, he has a sleeveless khaki shirt with an open collar showing his bare upper chest. He has has a green strap on the right side. That detail does continue to the back. On that strap, he has two green grenades. On the left side of his chest, he has silver jump wings, a silver star badge, and silver dog tags. It's very unlikely Buzzer earned these for himself. He most likely took these off of his victims. His arms are bare. There are no additional details on his right arm. On his left arm, he has a black band around his wrist, and he has a black tattoo. It's hard to make out a exactly what this is, but I think it is a dagger and a snake. His waist piece is in a base light blue plastic color with a black belt. There's a small black pouch on the left side of the belt. He has a silver skull and crossbones belt buckle and what looks like a black leather crotch cover. His legs are light blue. This is most likely supposed to be blue jeans. On his upper front legs, he has black armor pieces and he has some tall brown, nicely designed biker boots. Let's take a look at Buzzer's file card, and we have several variations. These are mostly interesting variations, too. They changed the text on 
some of these. This is Buzzer's first file card. It has his faction as the enemy. It doesn't say Cobra here, which is correct. He does sometimes work for Cobra, but he is not a Cobra agent. They did not have a separate emblem for the Dreadnoughts at the time, so he just gets labeled the enemy. There's a portrait of Buzzer here, painted by the legendary Hector Garrido. He is a Dreadnought, and his codename is Buzzer. His file name is Dick Blinken, in parentheses Richard Blinken Smythe. This is a bit of a joke with the names on these first three Dreadnought file cards. If you put the file cards together, their names are Tom, Dick, and Harry. And this is slang for just an unspecified group of people. Their last names are Winken, Blinken, and Nod. And this is taken from a poem by Eugene Field. His place of birth is Cambridge, England. Although the Dreadnoughts gang originated in Australia, Buzzer is British. This paragraph says, Buzzer was an extreme left-wing Cambridge sociology don. This is referring to the University of Cambridge in the United Kingdom, which is also the birthplace of Buzzer. A don is essentially a teacher or a tutor. He was a sociology don who went to Australia to research the biker gang phenomenon, only to be transformed into the very object of his research. Years of intellectual displeasure caused a repressed psychotic anger manifested in an intense desire to chainsaw apart the expensive gigaws of technological society. I can relate to that man. I can really relate. This is where we get a change on the variant file cards, and I will get to that, but I want to finish reading this one first. This paragraph says, Specialty and M.O., and there's an asterisk. M.O. stands for modus operandi, and this could use its own asterisk. Modus operandi is Latin for mode of operation. A scavenger of the swamps, Buzzer can cut through steel, wrought iron, and any metal except armor plate with his diamond tooth chainsaw. Apparently, somebody at Hasbro thought this text needed to be changed, and they were in such a hurry they didn't even have time to reprint the cards, so they just slapped a sticker over that first paragraph. This is Buzzer's second file card. It is the same as the first file card, except this sticker, which has a different sentence here. It says, Years of intellectual displeasure and extreme indignation at society's two-faced morality manifested in the intense desire to chainsaw apart the expensive gigas of technological society. He no longer has psychotic anger, now he has extreme indignation. I can only guess at the reason for this change. They may have not wanted to attribute his change to some kind of mental disorder. They might have been a little touchy after the Zartan schizophrenia debacle. Buzzer's third file card is the same as the second file card, except that paragraph is no longer a sticker. It is now printed on the card. Buzzer's final file card, most likely the card released in 1986, is the same as the third file card, except instead of being printed on a peach background, as the early cards, it is printed on a gray background. The comic book miniseries G.I. Joe Order of Battle, issue number three, has an entry for Buzzer, and it uses the psychotic anger text from the first file card. Looking at how Buzzer was used in G.I. Joe media, he first appeared in the animated series in the miniseries The Revenge of Cobra Part 1, with the other Dreadnoughts. He participated in the rescue of Cobra Commander from prison. He had numerous appearances in the Sunbow era of the animated series. He was also in the 1987 animated movie. That's where his history with the animated series ends. He did not appear in the Deke era of the series. Probably the most remembered animated episode for the Dreadnoughts was Cold Slither. The Dreadnoughts formed a fake rock and roll band, which was a front for Cobra's subliminal mind control device. The episode is totally bonkers. You should see it. Buzz played drums. In the G.I. Joe comic book series published by Marvel Comics, he first appeared in issue number 25 along with the other Dreadnoughts. It took a little while for the Dreadnoughts to take off, but once they established themselves as characters, they got a lot of use in the comic book. The comic also introduced the trope of the Dreadnoughts enjoying grape soda and chocolate-covered donuts, which is probably a euphemism for drugs and alcohol. Maybe the best way to enjoy grape soda and chocolate-covered donuts is to dunk the donut in the grape soda. That is vile. The Dreadnoughts were delightfully anarchistic and destructive. They frequently vandalized G.I. Joe vehicles. Buzzer even took a chainsaw to Mutt's Dog Junkyard, which was not delightfully anarchistic and destructive. That was just mean. The Dreadnoughts, and Buzzer in particular, appeared on a lot of covers of the comic book. Buzzer's position as the de facto leader of the Dreadnoughts, when Zartan wasn't around, was established in issue number 35. In that issue, Buzzer stole Zartan's special hologram projecting 
Standing Motorcycle and terrorized G.I. Joe's Clutch, Breaker, and Rock and Roll. Looking at Buzzer overall, I like this figure. It's my favorite of the original three Dreadnoughts. It has a rebellious, anarchistic style that I can appreciate. It's a well-designed figure. It has many points of interest, from the sunglasses to the ponytail to the badges and dog tags on the chest, and he's sculpted to look kind of ugly, which is appropriate for a Dreadnought. G.I. Joe is primarily a military-themed toy line, and I prefer it that way. I can understand why the creative team would want to expand it a bit to broaden the appeal, and a motorcycle gang is a reasonable way to do that. It's also a way to add some color variety to the line. I will always prefer the green and the brown and the black, but yeah, you need some other colors too, and this is a way to do that. The accessories are great. Let me qualify that. One of the accessories is great. I can live without the backpack and the flail, chain, blade, weapon, whatever that thing is, but I cannot live without the chainsaw. The file card, no matter which one you read, makes him a fascinating character. He's one of the most educated characters in the entire G.I. Joe series, and he has a dramatic backstory going from a university don to a rebel biker. The Dreadnoughts are weird, and they are weird on purpose. They're not like some of the later Joes that were weird but trying to be cool. No, the Dreadnoughts Dreadnoughts are bonkers. Not every G.I. Joe fan likes the Dreadnoughts, just like not every G.I. Joe fan likes ninjas in G.I. Joe, and I do understand that. However, keep in mind, it could have been worse. We could have had Ewoks. That was my review of Buzzer. I hope you enjoyed it. I have hated the combination of grape soda and chocolate-covered donuts. However, this time, despite having changed nothing about it, it will somehow be better. It is not better. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I have a huge back catalog of vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. Make sure you check those out. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. If you'd like to help me continue doing these videos, please support the channel on Patreon, like Sean Beckett. You see all the names scrolling on the screen right now? Your name could be there. Please join me for the entire year of 2022 celebrating the 40th anniversary of G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero. I'll be back soon with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.